It's Monday morning. I just got finished with Riley's walk, so now I'm going to eat really quick before I go into the office. I'm going to give this French style oui yogurt by Yoplait a try. It's definitely in a really, really cute glass container and sealed top. And then I have some milk right here. Might be overload of dairy actually. So I don't even know what French style means. Wow, it's very creamy. I guess something I forgot is that this is not Greek yogurt. So seeing that white top made me think that it was like Greek yogurt because it has all the fruit and color on the bottom. And normal Greek yogurt is not very good, not very flavorful. Trying to mix in stuff from the bottom. Last night was so rough for me. I went to bed around 1 in the morning and then couldn't fall asleep until close to 4 because my nose was so stuffed up and it was getting so frustrating. But I guess. The good thing is that, I mean, waking up was tough, but right now I feel okay. Sucky that is Monday. It's also a day that I don't think will be sunny at all. Okay, I'm done with my yogurt. Actually, I don't know how these labels are put on. They look like they are not stickers, but these seem like really good containers to keep. I have no idea for what, but they're so cute. I can't see why you wanna keep them, so maybe I should. I'll keep these. All right, I gotta go to work. Oh, man. Hello, it is lunchtime. <laughs> Wait, let me see if I can get him to, whoa. Oh, I really like holding him like this. Maybe I'm a weird person. Maybe he don't like it, but he's just always very vocal. He has a tumor on the side of his, oh, he has a tumor on the side of his neck right now. All right, now he goes. I need to make up four hours extra this week because it took Friday off for her birthday and I didn't accrue, and I didn't accrue enough PTO that day so I took four days I mean I took four hours extra that I didn't have and now I have to make it up so today I have to leave at like 7 p.m. so late I spent a lot of brain power thinking about the whole collar ordeal where I was paranoid that the fit was not correct on her. But I also think that my impatience isn't good because right after I notice something that really bothers me, I immediately go to the trainers or I ask somebody and I try to get a quick response. And usually that Solution means that going to a trainer just means paying them a lot of money for a session And since all I really care about right now is the color fit Paying like 200 plus dollars for a one-hour session doesn't seem necessarily like a good idea. It doesn't thrill me and <clears throat> Another thing I was just realizing is I think I'm just being too black and white about what a re what the correct fit necessarily means because I think there are times where maybe I correct her at a level where I expect her to have a vocalization and she doesn't makes me think that it's not on properly, but at the same time, it could also mean like something else was going on at the time. So <clears throat> there are times where maybe on our walk, she would be shaking 
and simultaneously I give her a correction and she doesn't end up giving a vocalization or not a very loud one. And that actually kind of happened just earlier and I was thinking like, you know, not every single 50 or 60 will have the same exact response. Like I should know these things. I've had her on it for over a year, but sometimes I just focus so much on one aspect, like this number should always get this level of vocalization, but it's not true. Um, if she's shaking, her body is in movement and then more than likely she would probably feel it less or she's too busy shaking that she doesn't have the, I don't know, multitasking power to make a vocalization. So I'm starting to think that I should try, ugh, sorry, I'm burping. I should try different solutions on my own first and see how they work for me because sometimes just like the, the fit that I have on her right now, to me, it feels like a pretty solid fit and it would surprise me if it wasn't correct. And I guess to be realistic, I really just hardly use the e-collar now. The only times I use the e-collar is usually for stuff like place. That's one of the only few obedience commands I give to her on a daily basis. And she hasn't been doing anything correct worthy for a long time or very infrequent. So the main times where I would be more concerned about it is hiking, where it's not like I always give her higher corrections, but I just wanna make sure that if there is a situation where maybe she's like chasing a squirrel or something, I can correct that immediately and feel confident that, you know, the collar fit is on correct to give the proper level of correction. And so she has her attention on me and not blow up not end up blowing me off and chasing a critter. She doesn't actually chase critters very often at all because I always correct that, but there was a situation last week, no, two weeks ago, where she did end up chasing something and I corrected it immediately, but I guess I kind of include that because I know that huskies are breeds that tend to have high prey drives and you read all this garbage on the internet about characteristics of huskies and people apply them to every single husky but i just don't think that is good information um yes there are generalizations but with proper training your dog should not be doing any of that like for example, people say that huskies cannot live in apartments, they can't live in flats, they can't live in smaller spaces. That is BS because first off, your dog shouldn't be running around your house. The main reason that I did let her run around my house in my condo was because I personally thought the space that I had there was pretty big and it was contained running. Like she would only be active if I was playing with her. Any other time, she's not just running around wreaking havoc. Um, and normally if your dog has good structure, your dog will not destroy anything. She has never ever, I don't think she's ever put her mouth even on any of my shoes. She has never really put her mouth on any of my furniture. She has never chewed anything except a toy that I give to her. So she has never been destructive in any way. She doesn't do any digging stuff. I've never seen her dig at all. And yeah, just like a lot of those classic destructive husky behaviors like escape artist nonsense is not applicable. It's just a lot of stuff like that that I read frequently whenever people talk about huskies and just wanted to take this moment to say that if you are a relatively new dog owner, hopefully you're not tainted yet by all the bad information that is out there because there's a lot of bad information. So please try not to get your information from Reddit. Try not to get your information even from the first few Google results because those will be bad and unfortunately the only way you can get good results is by looking directly at the trainers that provide the right structure and philosophies for dog training which are solid canine training home to canine the good dog training and rehabilitation those are the main ones that i know <sighs> Thank <laughs> you.
Okay, today is another spaghetti day. And I stayed at work an extra hour or so. I am kind of drained, but at the same time, going to cook. Originally, I was going to do macaroni and cheese, but it's Monday. I can't be lazy on Monday, so I'm going to do the most basic spaghetti with no vegetables at all. <laughs> all right. Also, while I'm cooking, I wanted to try one of these Lara Bar Bites, because I haven't yet. All right, let's see. They look like this. It's okay. Chocolate with some coconut. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Alright, after that disaster, I am an idiot because I usually kind of like leave the heat on too high by accident when my oil is heated and then I poured the sauce on and you know what happened. Something I wanted to mention in case people really don't like looking at my chapped lips. So something I noticed is that if I start using lip products like chapstick, lip balm, lip gloss, any of that, I start noticing that my lips start becoming dependent on them in the sense that if I don't use them consistently, my lips end up feeling more dry than if I don't use it at all. And I started noticing this a couple years ago where if I left the house without my chapstick, my day would be awful because my lips would be feeling terrible, chapped and dry and just I feel like it was overkill compared to natural. And I was also thinking how humans existed without chapstick, so we don't really need it. I feel like chapstick, when you apply it, I feel like your body starts to become accustomed to having an external source that is moisturizing your lips. And as a result of that, your body stops moisturizing your lips on its own. I don't. I don't actually have scientific evidence of this, but I kind of feel like that train of thought makes a lot of sense because, you know, if there's something else that is keeping your lips moisturized, then your body's like, oh, I don't have to worry about it anymore. And I did start noticing, you know, after I stopped putting on any chapstick whatsoever, I stopped needing it. But I think recently, um, I don't, re I don't remember wearing lip gloss consistently or anything, but I did start noticing a bit more of a negative reaction for my lips in terms of it felt more chapped than usual. And I do think that a lot of it does rely on you drinking plenty of water, which I have been not very good at the past week or so. But overall, that is why my lips might look really awful 90% of the time. It is because I don't want to put anything on them and if they're more chapped than usual then I'm probably not drinking as much water as I should so for the people that don't like seeing it I'm sorry I'm trying to keep my body as natural as possible I don't want to apply too much extra stuff and um, I feel like relying on chapstick otherwise your lips end up getting dry is not very a good thing, so go cold turkey if you can. <laughs> Look at how attentive she is being on the movie. I'm watching Leviathan right now. It is a Russian movie. Same director as Loveless, so I am giving it a try. Two and a half hours. 